friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another WW Weekly Meal Prep. I cannot wait to share these three recipes with you guys this week. My breakfast, my lunch, and a dessert that is so incredibly delicious and so low point, you're never gonna believe it. So if you wanna see what's on my plan for meal prep this week, all you have to do is keep watching. For breakfast this week, I'm going to be making a sausage hash brown cream cheese breakfast casserole. This sounds so good, and I'm simply going to pair this with fruit. So it is going to be such a fantastic breakfast for the Smart Points. So let me show you what's in our casserole. So first you're going to need some shredded hash browns. You'll need some salt and pepper. Cream cheese, I'm gonna go ahead and use fat-free. It's the least amount of points some sort of sausage. So what I have on hand are these Jimmy Dean fully cooked turkey sausage links. So I'm just going to use those. Milk or milk alternative, I have Fairlife on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and use up the rest of that. You'll also need some flour, 12 eggs. So make sure you stock up on your eggs. And then I'm gonna do a mix of half Trader Joe's shredded light mozzarella and half fat free shredded cheese. So let's get started on this week's breakfast meal prep. So the first thing that I did is went ahead and took my block of cream cheese and cut it into about half inch pieces. I also took my pre-cooked sausage links and cut those up as well. Now if you're using raw sausage, the first step is to cook it down and get it crumbled up. But I'm using the pre-cooked, so it was easy. I just went ahead and cut it into little slices. So what I have here is 15 ounces, or half of the bag, I measured it on my food scale, of my hash browns. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some salt. And then of course, add in some pepper. I'm gonna give that a nice big stir. And then from there, we'll go ahead and add in our cream cheese. So stir up your hash browns really good with the salt and the pepper. And then you're gonna take your cubes of cream cheese and add it in with your hash browns. And you wanna just kind of mix it together until you've got the cream cheese kind of spread throughout your hash brown. So go ahead and squish it with your spoon, push it down, break up those chunks. By cutting them into chunks, it just makes it a little bit easier to get it intermixed with your hash browns. So you just wanna mix until cream cheese is mixed throughout all of your hash brown potatoes. Once you get your cream cheese mixed in good with your hash browns, go ahead and get a 9 by 13 pan, spray it with some nonstick cooking spray, and we're going to put our hash brown cream cheese mixture here in the bottom of our baking dish, and we're going to want to spread this out nice and even, and kind of squish it down again, make sure you've got a little bit of hash brown and a little bit of cream cheese in all the portions of your baking dish. Get that nice and even. I'm actually gonna apply some pressure because I want the hash browns to form somewhat of a crust and kind of meld together with the cream cheese. And in order to do that, I feel like we need to kind of squish it down and basically pat it down to make it a crust. Oh, this looks so good, you guys. Hash browns and cream cheese, yum. Okay, and then from there, we are going to take our sausage. So whatever you ended up doing, whether you did crumbles or pre-cooked and we're just going to lay our sausage over the top of our hash browns and our cream cheese look at this yum once you get the sausage put on there you're going to take half of your cheese and again i did four ounces fat free and four ounces of trader joe's light shredded mozzarella i did just measure it out on my food scale so i'm going to sprinkle half of the cheese over the top of my sausage and hash brown mixture. And then we are gonna mix together essentially a roux. We're gonna do our flour and our milk, and we're gonna make a roux that's gonna kind of bind this together. And then our eggs will be in that as well. So there's about half of my cheese over the top. 
Next, we're going to take one quarter cup of flour and add it to a rather large bowl because we're also going to be adding our eggs in. And then I've got my one cup of milk and I'm gonna slowly add that to my flour and I'm going to whisk as I go because I want this to end up with a smooth consistency of the milk and the flour. So you don't wanna add all of your milk at once. So go ahead and get that nice and whisked together until you've created a, a thicker liquid, a roux. Once your milk mixture is nice and smooth, we're gonna go ahead and break a dozen eggs into our milk and flour mixture, and then we're gonna give that a quick stir too, similar to if we were making scrambled eggs. Once your eggs are nice and mixed together, we're gonna pour this over the top of our casserole and we want it nice and even. You wanna make sure that there's egg mixture in every nook and cranny of your casserole because this is what's going to help bind everything together and make it more of a casserole versus just a baked hash brown dish. And I'm gonna kinda of just tap on my counter I want to make sure my eggs are getting nice and drizzled down throughout my hash browns and then lastly we're gonna add the rest of our cheese now the recipe does not call for the casserole to go in the oven covered but I'm gonna cover mine in foil only because I don't want my cheese to get really brown and crispy uh, through the entire cooking process so I'm actually gonna go ahead and cover my casserole with some foil for the majority of the cooking it wants it in the oven for 30 to 40 minutes so about 30 minutes in I'll check it and if it's about done I'll pull off the foil and then I'll let it melt and brown up the cheese but you guys this looks delish I just pulled our breakfast casserole out of the oven you guys look at this those hash browns nice and crispy so I'm gonna let this rest for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna cut it into six servings so it is a lot that's why I'm just pairing it with fruit because it's gonna be quite a large serving and everything you need is in here your protein your starch everything so I'm gonna let this rest cut this into six servings pop it into a meal prep container and I'll show you the serving size and give you the smart points here is my completed breakfast meal prep you guys I'm serious this casserole it could not look any better look at how cheesy potatoey so delicious so this is what I'm going to be having for breakfast so what I have here is one sixth of the hash brown sausage cream cheese breakfast casserole one sixth of the casserole is only six smart points and then I'm pairing it with just a side of some fresh blueberries so this entire breakfast is only six smart points everything you need in a balanced complete breakfast and again only six smart points can't beat it for my lunches this week i'm going to be making smothered pork chops my husband is not a pork chop fan and i really like them so i thought i would take advantage of my meal prep to make some delicious pork chops and i'm just going to pair these with a vegetable and some fruit so it's going to be a fairly low carb meal as well so let me show you what is in our pork chops so first you're going to need some flour some reduced sodium chicken broth salt and pepper thyme and the recipe called for cajun seasoning i do not have any so i decided to just go ahead and use dax italian blast this seasoning has a bit of a kick but the flavor is so delicious and as you can see dax all of their spices are no salt which is awesome so there is no salt it is all pure ingredients nothing artificial i love dax they have about 20 different seasonings i have every single one and they are all absolutely amazing i highly recommend dax especially if you do a lot of cooking most importantly before weigh-in day you don't want to up your salt intake before you have to weigh in and with dax you're getting the flavor without the salt so i highly recommend dax you'll be seeing it a lot in my cooking videos so it's time to hop onto Dax's website, order yourself an array of their seasonings. I love the Italian Blast. It does have a little bit of a kick, so that's why I'm substituting it in for Cajun. Use my code for 10% off and 
free shipping. You can't beat it. My code is here on the screen and the link for Dax is down in the description box. So I'm going to be adding some Italian blast. Oh, I seriously, you guys, I love Dax. You're also going to need an onion, some light butter. Of course, you're going to need pork chops. I opted for bone in pork chops and some low fat buttermilk. So let's get started on our smothered pork chops. So the first step is to take your pork chops, go ahead and sprinkle on your Cajun seasoning or your Dax, whatever it is that you're gonna be using for your pork chops. And then we're gonna wanna flip these and do the same thing, season the other side of our pork chop as well. And remember this has a kick. Uh, so I'm not going to add a ton to mine. I like my food a little spicier than my husband, but I still am going to be aware that this definitely has a kick to it. And then I'm going to take my quarter cup of flour and I'm going to put it here on a plate, kind of sprinkle it out. And we are going to take our pork chops and we're going to dip it into the flour mixture. And then we're going to shake off any excess flour. And I like to kind of do the sides. I'm not really too concerned about where the bone is, but I do kind of want to get a little bit of the flour mixture on the sides as well. And then once you get your pork chop floured, I have a pan here with some nonstick cooking spray, and I'm just going to add all of my pork chops directly to my frying pan. Once your pork chops are mixed into the flour, we're going to put our pan on the stove on high heat and we're going to cook our pork chops two to three minutes each side until they begin to brown. Once your pork chops have begun to brown, we're going to go ahead and remove them from our pan. Now they are not cooked all the way through, which is just fine. We're going to be returning them and we're going to remove them and we're going to put them on a separate plate. And we're gonna reuse this pan to cook down some of our other ingredients, but these are already looking so delicious. To your same pan, you're gonna go ahead and add in one tablespoon of light butter, and we're gonna kind of mix that around. To our melted butter, we're gonna go ahead and add in our sliced up onions. We're also going to add in a little bit of thyme. Welcome to being a dog mom. And we're also going to add in a little bit of salt and we're gonna cook these onions down until they are soft. Once your onions are nice and sauteed, yum, we're gonna add in the one tablespoon of reserved flour that was left over from when we breaded our pork chops. I forgot to mention that. Make sure you don't throw that little bit of flour that's left over. And go ahead and mix that in here with your onions. And then to that, we're gonna add in our one and a half cups of chicken broth. And we're just gonna let this cook down. That little bit of flour should help thicken it up a little bit. So you're just gonna let this cook down until it has begun to thicken. Once your chicken broth has reduced about two thirds of the way, this is where we're gonna go ahead and add in our two thirds cup of our buttermilk. And you're just going to kind of mix that in with the chicken mixture. You guys, this looks so good. It smells amazing. You can smell that thyme. Oh, yum. I'm also going to be adding in just a little bit of black pepper. And then the next step is, is we're just going to re-put our pork chops into the mixture. And we're gonna reduce our heat to medium low. And we wanna let our pork chops cook for about eight to 10 minutes, or just until our pork chops are cooked completely through. That's the main objective is to get the pork chops the rest of the way cooked. And it should thicken up the mixture as well a little bit more with that buttermilk. So we're just gonna let this cook down until the pork chops are cooked through. And I'll show you our completed smothered pork chops. Our smothered pork chops are done. Look at these, you guys. Yum. These look amazing. So I'm going to let these cool for just a couple of minutes, get them into my meal prep container, and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be having for lunch and give you the smart points. So here is my completed lunch, you guys. I am so excited about this. So here is what our smothered pork chops look like. You can have three ounces of pork for four smart points. This is just about three ounces. So I'm actually going to be counting my pork chop as five smart points. And that includes 
the little sauce over it because there are points in the flour and there's points in the buttermilk. So we have to make sure that we count appropriate points for that. So my pork chop here is five smart points. I'm pairing that with a side of veggies. Here are the veggies that I use. I love these. These are the Grande Classics from Flavor Pack. See how they say large cut? I love that because they're actual whole vegetables that are in the frozen blend. So I have one serving of the Pacific Blend, sugar snap peas, yellow carrots, orange carrots, and broccoli. And then I also bagged up some watermelon because like I said, I'm obsessed with watermelon. So I have a bag as my second fruit of the day for lunch. And then for dessert, I'm going to be having one of my new favorite things. This is the Choco Ripe Peanut Butter Patties. These legit taste like a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and they are only one smart point per patty. There are two patties in this little package here. So this is a total of two smart points. They are sugar-free, malitol-free, which is great. And malitol is what sometimes bothers people's stomachs. It also boosts your glycemic index. So not the best artificial sweetener, high fiber as well. So this little pack of peanut butter cups is two smart points. You can buy these on Protein Wise's website. If you click the link down in the description box, it'll give you $10 off your first order. So you can order up some good stuff for free and they have tons of WW friendly products. So I'm gonna have that for two smart points. So my pork chop is five, my veggies and my watermelon are zero, and then my peanut butter cups are two. So this is a seven smart point lunch, you guys. How amazing for seven smart points. For a sweet treat this week, I'm gonna be making donuts and I cannot wait to make this recipe. It is a WW pound dropper recipe. I am changing it just a little bit. I'm actually going to use vanilla frosting instead of chocolate frosting just to kind of change it up a little bit. But let me show you what you're going to need to make these donuts and you guys are going to die when you hear the smart points. So the first thing you're going to need is the devotion brownie batter protein powder. This, as you know, is my favorite protein powder in the world. It is only two smart points per scoop. It is delicious. It has 20 grams of protein. It's sugar-free. It even has MCT oil in it. It does not make you bloat. It has no aftertaste, no whey, no chalk. It's amazing. It is so good blended up in a protein shake and it is amazing for baking. They also have the angel food cake, which is just as fantastic for baking shakes, etc. So today we're going to make chocolate donuts. So we're going to need the devotion down in the description box. There is a link that will bring you directly to the devotion website and it will give you 10% off of your order. So you cannot beat that 10% off. So I suggest you run as fast as you can a devotion because you're going to be seeing this used a lot in a lot of recipes and I'm going to be using this in a lot of what I eat in a day. I would say that on average I have devotion pretty much every day. So we're going to use the brownie batter. You're also going to need some baking powder. Everything's better with sprinkles. So some sprinkles, the sugar-free Pillsbury vanilla frosting. You can use chocolate if you would rather, but I decided to go with vanilla. We're gonna need some vanilla extract and an egg. And then of course you're going to need a donut pan of some sort. I bought this off of Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and link this down in the description box for you guys. I love this donut pan, it is awesome. So let's make some donuts, shall we? For donuts, you're going to need a medium sized bowl. I went ahead and warmed up in my microwave one third cup of hot water. To that, we are going to add one scoop of our brownie batter devotion powder. So I'll get out one nice level scoop of that. We're also going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla extract, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one egg. Ooh, it's bubbling up like a volcano, nice. And then we're just going to stir this all together until everything is nice and combined. This recipe is supposed to make five donuts. So I decided not to double it, but if you're looking for more than five donuts, then I would suggest doubling the recipe. I'm just going with five because that way I can have one every day. And I think that that is, I think that that's sufficient for me. So get everything nice and mixed together. Oh, yum. And then we're ready to put this into our donut pan. 
Grab your donut pan, go ahead and get it nice and greased. And then we are going to add in our mixture just in a nice circle around our donut mold. And again, we want five donuts total. So I'm just gonna fill these as full as I can to ensure that I get five donuts because that will keep the smart points what the original recipe is. And I don't know if I mentioned, but this is actually a WW Pound Dropper recipe. She is amazing. Her blog is fantastic. Her recipes are fantastic. So if you're looking for WW recipes where she's already figured the points for you, I highly suggest that you go to WW Pound Dropper, all one word, dot com. You can also follow her on Instagram. So again, this recipe came from her, one of my very favorite uh, bloggers, recipe bloggers for WW. So we're going to get our donut pan nice and filled with our mix and then we'll be ready to put these into the oven. So here are our chocolate donuts. Yum. So these are going to go in the oven at 350 until they're completely cooked through about 10 minutes or so. Then we're going to allow them to cool and then we will frost them and sprinkle them. I just pulled our donuts out of the oven. Look at how good these look, you guys. Yum. They come out so easily. So I'm just going to let these cool for about five minutes and then we'll be ready to frost them up. Once your donuts have cooled, we're going to take one tablespoon of our sugar-free vanilla frosting. We're going to put it in the microwave for about 15 seconds just to get it all melted. And then we are going to take it and we are going to spread it on top of our donuts. And we're going to go ahead and frost all five of our donuts and then we'll add some sprinkles. You guys, a frosted donut. Yum. Once we get them frosted, we're going to add some sprinkles. And you guys, look at this, a frosted donut and this entire donut frosting included one smart point isn't that insane so who said that you can't have donuts on ww on an on point tracking day one smart point per donut oh my goodness am i excited i just had to come back on here and let you know that i just had one of these donuts seriously you guys these are amazing they legitimately taste like a store-bought donut. So good, that frosting makes them nice and sweet. They're a cake texture. You guys have to, have to try these donuts. So here's what I'm gonna be taking for snacks for the upcoming week. So first, per the usual, is the Built Bar. I have one of these every day. This is my morning snack that I have after breakfast, before lunch, as it keeps me full. There's 15 grams of protein and six grams of fiber per Built Bar, so it keeps you full, but they taste amazing, just like a candy bar. You can freeze them, put them in the fridge, eat them right out of the box. They're absolutely divine. They are a staple on WW. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't have just one, sometimes two, Built Bars. You can order these down in the description box using the link. My discount code is here on the screen. It will give you 10% off and free shipping. They do have a sample box if you haven't tried Bill Bar before. And then of course, most likely you're gonna want a full box and you can reuse my code over and over again. So I am definitely having a Bill Bar as this is only three smart points and these are delicious. I'm going to be having some roasted garlic hummus from Trader Joe's and I'm gonna dip my little baby carrots in there. This is two smart points for two tablespoons. So a fantastic snack option. And then lastly, I decided to make a little Greek yogurt situation. And I'm gonna be using some non-fat Greek yogurt. This is Wallaby Organic. I actually bought this at a health food store. This Greek yogurt is really delicious. It's a little pricey. I wanna say it was like $7. But it tastes delicious. It is zero smart points because it is plain non-fat Greek yogurt. I'm going to be using some of my Lakanto monk fruit sweetener to sweeten up my yogurt. And then to that for a crunch factor, I'm going to be adding some of the Julian Bakery Pro Granola in vanilla cinnamon cluster. Here are the stats on this granola, you guys. This granola, along with the Built Bar, in my opinion, are the two WW staples. You can have an entire half of a cup of this granola for two smart points. So what I'm going to do is measure out one half of a cup 
and I'm gonna top my sweetened yogurt with it and it is so good you guys it tastes like a yogurt parfait those things even the McDonald's one are like seven points so you can have a copycat parfait for two smart points because the only thing with points is the granola two smart points for half a cup is insane most granolas are anywhere from five to ten smart points for half of a cup so this granola is delicious it's paleo and keto low net carb high protein gluten-free grain-free nothing artificial no preservatives and this particular one even has prebiotics and probiotics if you have not gotten julian bakery granola I highly recommend that you do so if you go down in the description box and click the link and enter my code here on the screen you'll get 10 percent off and free shipping you do have to click the link in the description box in order to use the code they're kind of they're tied simultaneously together so make sure that you click the link enter the code order julian bakery you will not be sorry i'm telling you you guys it's amazing so this is going to be a two smart point dessert or snack a two smart point snack and a three smart point snack. So that's what I'm planning on snacks for the upcoming week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW meal prep. I hope you enjoyed all three recipes that I shared with you. They are all incredible. They are must makes every single one of them. So run as fast as you can to Devotion's website and pick up the brownie batter protein powder. It is so good. Go ahead and use the link in my code. You'll get 10% off. You can't beat it. So I hope you enjoyed the three recipes. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to extend a huge warm welcome to my YouTube friends and family. Hit that little subscribe button and the bell. That way you'll get notified when I upload a new video. I do upload almost every single day, so you don't want to miss a single one. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this meal prep and what recipe are you most excited to try. And it can be all three if you're excited to try all three. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye, guys.